Hello everybody and welcome to the Auto Club Speedway. We are getting set for some high speed V-shaped racing here at Auto Club. I've been joined up here in the booth by Seth Cole and Seth. This is a very different racetrack compared to uh, Homestead that we were at last week. Yeah, definitely a lot different, a lot more spacious, higher speed. We saw it not as easy to pass at Homestead. Obviously, it wasn't passing, but you had to kind of be methodical in how you're going to pass and kind of set the pass a couple of laps earlier. Here today, as long as you got the blood and you got momentum in the draft, you're going to be chasing driver to make it pass the entirety of this race. So, traffic may not be nearly as important here today as it been last week. Yeah, that's a good point. And another thing I've noticed during uh, both kind of qualifying and the practice for these drivers is that the outside lane seems to be a bit of the preferred lane here. And why is that? Well, the big reason, especially on a long run, is we, we talk about this all the time at the mile and a half, but it applies just as much at a two-mile track like Auto Club or Michigan, that right front tire heat starts to kick up. So while it is the shorter way around the racetrack on the inside line, it's more of a I, I, I would say uh, a more acute angle going into the corners, so the car is going to drift up a lot more. If you enter in on the top side, you've got a lot more room, a lot more speed that you can carry in because it's the wider, longer way around the racetrack, and you don't overcook that right front nearly as much. So, you know, maybe as the tires wear down and we see drivers maybe start to slip up a little bit out of the groove on the outside line, the inside line might come into play. But to your point, that outside line is going to be where most drivers will try and migrate to, especially on fresh good years yeah and this should be very interesting to see we've got uh laura chung on the pole in her fedex toyota camry alongside nick gunther in the uh number 21 for the wood brothers racing here so good qualifying efforts for them here uh today we're gonna go ahead kick it track side and get the opening ceremonies underway here at auto club <laughs> Race fans, it is time for the most famous words in motorsports. To give that command is the daredevil star of Disney's new movie, Muppets Most Wanted, our greatest Grand Marshal yet, the great Gonzo. Hey, thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Before we start, I would like to remind the drivers to follow all traffic and safety laws and remember, the California speed limit is 70 miles per hour. I'm just kidding. These drivers are as crazy as I am. So here we go. Drivers, start your engines. Go! The engines are fired here. 
at Auto Club Speedway as we are getting ready for the start of this race. Seth, we've got 40 laps broken down into three stages of 10, 10, and 20. And what are these stages going to mean for these drivers? Well, it's really going to be interesting because we're not exactly 100% sure what the fuel window is. And we saw last week at the end of the first stage, what was it, seven, I think, of our top 10 dove down pit road at the completion of the first stage, gave up those stage points for trying to go for the race win. So, Oh, we have an issue. The 41s, Jonathan Zorline. Oh, boy. Smoke oh. coming out of that number 41. Boy, multi-time winner last season. And that's not a good start for the Stuart House Racing car. We'll have to see if uh, if it's at least somewhat fixable. And we got another car on the apron there. Was that? Is that Charles Sanford? Yeah. Hometown hometown boy Charles Sanford. Yeah. Home track. And I was going to bring up here as well. So far, Toyota and Ford have kind of fired the first shot with Carson Gum winning. Whoa, Charles. Oh, I guess, well, okay, I guess Charles might have been ducking out of line for the 41, so I guess he's okay. But uh, we had Carson Gum for Toyota win at Daytona, and Matt McIntyre for Ford win last week at Homestead. So Chevy is the manufacturer outstanding right now that hasn't gotten a checkered flag. you got to think that more than likely they're going to be eyeing today to even the score. But, well, I guess troubles aren't over for Charles Sanford. He's going back down to the inside, down to the apron again. I thought they had whatever the problem fixed, uh, but... Apparently might, that's not the case. They say they might have thought he did. It might have been, might be a tire issue. We'll have to find out. The uh, we're gonna, you're getting ready to come to the green. The 41 car is still smoking in the back here. Maybe we'll have to see if that's terminal or not for the yeah, 41. The thing, right? He might be able to get whatever that is the problem repaired and get back out there. But I think that Charles Sanford and Jonathan Zorlin, regardless of what the issues are, they're probably going to lose a lap. Green flag is out. We are underway here at Auto Club. And the inside lane gets a bit of a jump, but here comes Orman trying to make it three wide. Yeah, how about that? We had Toyotas on the inside with Chung and Ormond, and then on the top side you had the uh, Fords lined up with Nick Gunther, and I just blanked out on who the 10 car is this season. Uh, uh, that's Zach Rogers. Thank you, yes. 11's going to get a good shove down the backstretch. Man, just look at how bumpy that backstretch is. Yeah, and people think that it, these tracks are smooth. Oh my gosh. Hold on, I just looked back there, and there's like... They're like eight wide back here. <laughs> well, I mean, that's your double vision kicking in. That's only four wide, but still. Like RJ Bishop might have been right in the middle of all that. Anthony McCrory there as well in the 16. Fitzwater on the inside in the four. And a driver who had a really good showing last week, Dylan Matthews in the 38. High, wide, and handsome there. Battle for the lead. Looks like Nick Gunther has gotten to the outside of that number 11. These cars head down the back straightaway. It looks like whatever issue the 99 car had, I believe, is fixed. He is back out on the racetrack. I think he is on the tail end of the lead lap if he's not one lap down already. Well, he'll be, he'll be a lap down here. They're going to catch him. He did get out uh, on the tail end of the lead lap, though, ahead of the leaders. But you can see they're just going to swallow him up. And as for the 41, the 41, unfortunately, a piston problem. Something in the engine terminal for the 41 car. Orland was strong in the playoffs last season, so that team going to look to rebound next week. Well, see, if the 99 car is up to speed, they might just catch him and draft off him. I don't know about passing, because it looks like he's able to kind of hold his ground over the 21 car. And now if you're Charles Sanford, you're hoping to see a caution sooner rather than later, because if, if you're able to stay ahead of the race leader, great. You don't have to rely on the lucky dog, but if you end up getting passed by the 21 or whoever ends up being the leader at the time that you get passed, you're in position for the lucky dog. You want that caution to come out you know, a little bit sooner than, than, you, than most people would expect because someone else could run into an issue, have to make an unscheduled pit stop, and then they may be a, end up being in the uh, lucky dog spot instead of you. Well, I mean, you also got to remember, too, uh, I don't have Lucky Dogs, remember? I'm not running that specific EXE that has them. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, so if you get trapped lap down, you still have to hold it the hard. You still have to earn, earn it back the hard way. So if you fell asleep during the, the last 30 seconds of my explanation, you didn't miss anything. Yeah. And speaking of missing anything, Trent Dunham, you talked about Chevy wanting to try to get a win. Look at Trent up here. He didn't really have a good first couple of weeks, but here he is at Auto Club battling for the second position. Trent, uh, wasn't he running up like in the latter half of the top 10 midway through the race last week at Homestead? And something happened to him on that final round of green flag pit stops, and he fell way, way back. I think he finished outside of the top 30, if I recall correctly. We were trying to figure out 
you know, what happened between the uh, the second pit stop and the third pit stop. So, yeah, he's definitely got the speed. We'll see if he's able to uh, have the execution here today as he jumps to the top side of Zach Rogers. I say, yeah, outside's the way to go. Look at him go to the outside. Here comes Seth Cole going to try three wide down the inside. Not going to work, I don't think, especially now six laps in. That inside line is going to be used less and less. You have to lift a lot more, especially through the center of the corner to get the car pointed off of turn two and turn four, and that loses you. It may not seem like much, but that loses you three, four, five miles per hour of straightaway speed. Seth Cole gets up in front of his teammate Kyle Matthews up here. We talked about Dylan Matthews last week. Now here's Kyle Matthews this week. Yeah, the other Matthews, and, you know, Kyle Matthews, we talk about this, you know, uh, at Daytona and Homestead, just the struggles that Kyle had last year in the Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet, looking for a bit of a bounce back season here and running good here right now in that uh, very beautiful Valvoline Chevrolet Camaro. Trent Dunham's really on the move here. The, Kyle Matthews has the fastest lap on the racetrack right now. So that's good for that's good for him. See the 21 kind of using Charles Sanford as a pick. Even while right in front of him, that's drafting help that he could use to try to stay in front of the tw in, in front of the one car. But Trent is yeah, Trent's just really fast. <laughs> Caught him out on that top side there. I think if you're battling for a position, if you're the car on defense, you cannot afford to give up the top. You saw Nick Gunther move down low to get the draft off the 99. Trent Dunham says, "Oh well, thank you very much." Saw that lane up there on the top side. Got to Nick's right rear, drafted him back, and now I think he's going to have him clear off of turn two. New leader, number one. And interesting, maybe that was by design, because remember the 99 and the one, they're teammates out of Trackhouse Racing. So maybe Charles Sanford was trying to goad Nick Gunther into surrendering that top side so Trent Dunham could go to the lead. That's very true. And look at this, Laura Chung still up here. Jessica Shelton coming up here. Zach Rogers hanging on up here. This is still anybody's first, first stage right now. We're coming to two laps to go in stage number one. Yes, we are indeed. And, uh, you know, in the case there of uh, Shelton and Laura Chung, of course, with Carson Gum getting a win already for Joe Gibbs Racing, trying to be the first organization with two victories on the season. And I, I mentioned this last week at Homestead as well in consideration of Laura Chung coming in the defending champion, moves over to a new team, a new manufacturer from Ford to Toyota. People wouldn't necessarily think that a champion's got anything to prove, but I think Laura Chung does here this season in the fact of, you know, I can go to something entirely different, a brand new manufacturer, and I can still go out there, win races, and maybe be a back-to-back -back champion. That's true. Last lap of stage number one, Trent Dunham going to try to stay in, I guess, stay behind the 99, probably be the best bet. He could save fuel that way, too. Exactly. Exactly. Being a good teammate here. Look, see how they're diamonding the corner? Entering high, kind of going towards the inside, and then and then when they come off the corner, they're back up to the outside. I think that's more of a defensive line there for Trent, making sure that nobody's able to rotate through the center of the corner, try and get a nose to his left rear coming off a of turn two, and then immediately back up to the wall to make sure he covers that outside line. It's going to work out for him. He's going to pick up a stage victory here. Yep, Trent Dunham with help from his teammate, who's, half, who's almost a lap down. Trent wins stage number one. And as everything crosses by, there's your top 10 results. Uh, gets a very decent looking top uh, top 10 right there. We're going to step aside. Go ahead. Beaver, Poti, Brock sneaking into the top 10. So stage points may be, may be important at the end of the regular season. Yep. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Be right back with more action here at Auto Club. We are back here at Auto Club as these cars get ready to complete the first lap of stage number two. Trent trying to go to the inside of his teammate. He's got to kind of watch out for that. He doesn't want to wear out his tires or give Nick Gunther a shot at the lead. Yeah, I don't understand this. I, I love the strategy of him riding behind his teammate in the 99. If he pulls alongside of Charles Sanford, that's going to slow both those cars down. 
and give Nick Gunther an opportunity to reel him back in. Now, you just saw him get back in line behind the 99. I don't know if maybe he was just trying to see what happens if he gets clean air to the nose or what, but uh, I was I was questioning that strategy. He might have just had a run on him. And had, you know, and rather than lifting, he just took it. Well, I mean, I guess that's a fair point. Yeah, you don't want to end up like lifting and losing that momentum either. Auto Club Michigan both very much so momentum tracks. Uh, more often than not, it's not really you passing somebody because your car is faster than the guy in front of you. It's more that you've got more momentum, more of a run than they do coming off a specific corner onto a straightaway. So, yeah, that's a good point. New second place driver on the inside, Jessica Shelton. Oh, that's a very interesting combination right there. What will Charles Sanford do? Be a oh, teammate or are you going to be a friend? Oh, coming to pit road. Pit road is an easier one to get onto in terms oh, of. Oh my lord! There's a wreck, Ellen. I think that's the 17 that just got spun. I don't think there's a yellow because the the because pit road is still open. Yep. So I think the 17 car is just going to have to come get a. There we go. Okay, I thought he was going to. Might be wrong, but I think there might have been some friendly fire between some uh, blue ovals. I think Matt McIntyre might have gotten spun by Dylan Matthews in the 38. Couldn't couldn't quite tell, but I think that's who it was. Charles Sanford can see out there, but Kyle Matthews is going to get credit for leading this lap here. So it looks like Seth, uh, these cars can go what about 13 between 13 and 15 laps. So they might have to. They might or they will have to make a final pit stop. So it's going to come down to what they take on that final pit stop. 13 laps is the furthest they can go on a tank of fuel, Michael. That means that they are going to have to come to pit road probably in the vicinity of, I would say, 13 to 15 laps to go. So, yeah, it's it's going to be really close. As a matter of fact, some of these drivers that have spent a lot of time out in front may have consumed a lot more fuel, and they may end up having to pit around maybe one to go. So uh, if we don't see a caution, things could get very interesting in the closing stages. Uh oh, and look who got out of pit road first. Rogers, Cole, Cody and Lamas, unless unless there was a group of cars that pitted without me seeing it. I think these might have been from uh, a previous group. Oh yeah, these th those are the cars that came out first, but look, Shelton got out ahead of Trent Dunham. But Trent Dunham's not letting her get away. <laughs> You heard what I said at the beginning of this, this race. Execution was going to be important. And pit road execution, just as important. I mean, honestly, I think that that might be where the race is won or lost here today. But Trent, <clears throat> excuse me, and Trent's not letting her go. There's one thing, though. Passenger is another. We saw him be able to catch out who was a Nick Gunther on the top side. We'll see if Shelton... Could be more defensive on that outside line, not allow the one to get to her right rear quarter panel. And Nick Gunther back there just looking at his chops saying, yes, race it up, please, because that could bring him back into oh, the Oh, look, here we go. On the inside, what a power move by Trent Dunham. Trying to take advantage of those fresh tires. Clear? I don't uh, I don't think so. Yeah, he's, yep, right. yeah there he is. Yep. <laughs> I think this... only one person knew if he was clear or not, and that was Trent Dunham. I think his spotter was probably going, ah, I don't know. It's up to you. We'll see. I don't. We'll see if Trent and them are the leader when they cross the start finish line. That's what I want to know here. It should be. Let's see. No, oh, cross the line in 19th. Uh, what? Up here. That's so and Zach Rogers as left, the race yeah. leader. No. The 12, the 77, and the 4 are, but no, but none of the other ones are. These cars came down pit road first, so I wonder what happened. What type of strategy? I, so, when you come down pit road, regardless of what the track is, with a big group of drivers, there's usually a, a slow up, kind of a chain slow up with everybody trying to make sure that they adhere to the braking zone of the car in front of them, and sometimes that loses you time. I don't see how that would lose you that much time here at Auto Club, but I'm honestly not sure. That's That one's got me perplexed, but story doesn't lie. Zach Rogers out in front now, and he's got a pretty sizable gap all the way back there to second place. Yeah, he does. He's got the draft of uh, who's that? Bernardo, Olivier, and uh, Charles Sanford up ahead, so he's able to 
maybe save some fuel here. The one thing I'm a little worried about there with the 10 car is, did they get that tank completely full of fuel? Because if they didn't, if they've got him one to two laps shorter of making it the rest of this run as opposed to everybody else, that falls into what I was talking about, where drivers could find themselves about one lap short of making it to the finish on one more pit stop. So that might be a slight cause for concern, but I'm not sure. And we saw it last week, a lot of drivers after the round of green flag pit stops lose a ton of track position. How about Laura Chung in the 11? I saw she's only about half a straightaway ahead of the race leader after she started up 29th. on the front row. She started on the pole. She's back in 29th right now. Yeah, she's only about six cars ahead of the race leader. White flag, stage two. Auto Club in Michigan always seem to be the tracks where the Fords are dominant. No, it's right there. Zach looked like he backed out of the throttle quite a bit through the center of the corner. Might be trying to save some fuel, so I, I, I'm wondering if they got that thing full. Well, I guess we will find out. Some of the names that popped up here in the top ten for this stage, though. Seth Cole up in third. Charlie Buxton, who had a great run last week at Homestead. He's fourth. Daniel Voyles up there in fifth. Madeline Crenshaw, she needs a good run. She's struggled the last couple of races. She's up there in sixth. Zach Rogers wins stage number two. Got to wait for the entire scoring pylon to catch up. One more. There it is right there. There's your top ten results for stage number two. We're getting ready to complete stage number three to the finish. We'll be right back with another quick commercial break. The Duracell Cup Series data file you have attempted to access is out of date. Uploading current file now. It's a brand new car from stem to stern, and it's never been raced at these speeds. The next gen car is opportunity. Everything is different with the exception of like the seat, the steering wheel, and your helmet. Unknown creates excitement. Back here at the Auto Club Speedway, getting getting ready for the final 20-lap sprint here. Rogers still leading. He's kind of lost touch with his back pack, with, with the front pack here a little bit. As we're coming back, Kyle Matthews taking over the second position here. His teammate right behind him. And, I mean, this is, this is an all very strange and wild call. We got the 77 up here, Christina Bell. She's a lap down. I don't know what happened during these pit stops. I didn't even see nobody come in the first time, and I wonder if this was a variance of strategies. It could have been a variance of strategies. I'm also wondering how many of these drivers that we're seeing, you know, currently a lap down or just ahead of the race leader, how many of them had to really slow up for the contact we saw coming to pit road between, I'm, I'm assuming it was Dylan Matthews. Again, we don't have confirmation on that, but I think it was Dylan Matthews that got into Matt McIntyre. I don't know how badly that broke up drivers that were closer to the rear of the field and put them back into this situation. But I'm, I'm still going back to the 10 of Zach Rogers. I'm still of the assumption that they may not have gotten that thing completely full of fuel. And that's how he gained all the track position that he did. You mentioned he's lost touch with this group up ahead of him. I think they're full throttle. He is not. He's running a lot lower on the racetrack. I think that's a case of him trying to be saving some fuel, make the racetrack well, a little bit shorter. I, I, I'm really concerned for this 10 car and whether he's going to be able to make it the rest of the way on one more stop. Well, we've been about 10 laps since the pit stops. 
Yeah, I think we got, what, about uh, another two or three laps before we'll see drivers dive onto pit road. And Zach Rogers, I think, was one of the first of the race leaders that came onto pit lane. So I think he would probably be the, the catalyst as to when this round of green flag pit stops begins. Not only that, but got a message e even then, this raw general manager, apparently. even then, I got to figure out what, um, if they're going to have enough fuel to make it. Yeah. Like if they come to pit road here between say laps 25 to 26, that's got them by my calculations, two to three laps short of making it the rest of the way. And you see how the field is in some portions spread out. We got pockets of battles going on here. When you are spread out and all by yourself, you're using up a lot more fuel. When we took the green to start this race, everybody was bunched up, nose to tail, one big pack. So they were getting better fuel mileage. Now in these spread out groups, what was a 12 to 13 lap fuel window could be somewhere around 10 to 11 laps of fuel that you can make it on one stop. So bunch of teammates a bunch of teammates around each other i mean if you look right here you've got joe gibbs teammates the 18 and the 11 and then maybe the 23 if you want to kind of yep, if you want to kind of roll yeah and then you've got the eight and the three right here you got a group here cole deaver and the three dylan potin and the six william brock in the 47 remember they finished eighth ninth and tenth at the end of the first stage and now they're mired way back here uh just inside of the uh top oh wait rogers came to pit road I think. Oh no, he didn't. I thought he did. I, I was I was a pack ahead. <laughs> We're on lap 26, and he's running, still running about full throttle here. He's yeah, still about four. Time comparison there. He was running about a second and a half slower than his fastest lap. Actually, more than that. Yeah, he he stays out again. Rogers on a strategy here, apparently. Oh, but the 42 is down pit road, and here comes Seth Cole. Yeah, from uh, what was that seventh position, and he was up around third, started drifting back, so I think he was saving fuel. Dylan Young coming down pit road. Charlie Buxton was dropping back, so I think he was also saving fuel. <laughs> Going to keep an eye on the This should put him about at 13 laps. Yep. He's right. coming in. Yep, 10 cars coming down pit road right now. The 99's coming in front of them. A couple more cars up here stay out. Looks like Kyle Matthews, Henry Sanford among those staying out this time. Boyles is in. Buxton, Lamas. The one of Trent Dunham was in. 78, Henry Sanford leads that lap. If I can find them. I'm trying to find where they're at on the racetrack. Right here, maybe? Yep, right here. Matthew Rodriguez stays out. They're trying not to put the 12 car a lap down, or the 12 car another lap down, I believe. No, 12 car's on the tail end. I think these three will be in this time, the 78, the 66, and the 5. Yep, here they come. Carson Gum, Daytona 500 winner. He actually stayed out an extra lap with Anthony McCrary. They're coming in this time. Here's Seth Cole. My question is, where is the six car? Did Seth Cole come out ahead or ahead of the ten car? Yeah. I doubt it. I mean, there was about, what, four and a half seconds, I think, between Rogers and Cole. Let's see. Well, Before he's the in. pit stop cycle began, Cole was back in seventh when he gave up a uh, spot in the top well, ten. Rogers, well, Rogers is right here. So let's ski. I guess we'll keep an eye on the ten and we'll see what's up. He's by himself. Nobody around. Yeah, but so is the 24. So at that point, it comes down to raw speed. There's the 99 trying to stay on the <laughs> stay on the lead lap. Yeah, Zach Rogers came down a relatively clean oh, no, pit road. It was only him and Charles. Oh, caution! Oh, caution! Wow, this changes everything. But yeah. where's the caution? I swear I didn't hit. I swear I didn't hit a button. I swear, I promise. All right, well, there's only one way to find out. Let's watch. Get spun off of pit lane entry. I don't know. <laughs> let's watch huh? the. Let's watch the pace car, yeah. and we'll see when the lights come on, and we'll see if that's. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Was that a flip? Let's see. The six car trying to battling with the twenty-three. The eleven comes out of nowhere. Po oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's gonna take out Laura Chung as well. Oh, that's well. That would explain why there was a big stack up right there. So let me explain for everybody what just happened there, in case you were wondering. 
Uh, there's a new EXE that's being used for a lot of, of series, including this one, called the Better Cautions EXE, which allows, during pit stops, drivers to not make contact with each other on pit lane. But once they come off pit lane, that, uh, that kind of ghosting ability is gone, and so since the 11 and the 6 were in the same area at the same time when they left the pit road exit line, that happened. Well, that, uh, you know, we, we could have probably had a number of different uh, caution-causing incidents on our bingo card. I don't think that would have been on there. Yeah, it wasn't. And now this is going to allow everybody to come down pit road at the same time again, if they so yeah, choose. everybody back into the picture, right inside the top 25 or so. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and kind of... I don't right, know what is... Samper's out of the race. Oh, he had a tire issue. He had a tire issue. Not too sure what exactly is happening right now. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, they can make it on fuel now. For real. Ten car is the leader, but it seems like... Hmm. Uh, Dylan Poteet's out of the race as well. Well, this may be a first for uh, Auto Club here. Gonna have to wait and see what's gonna happen. John Cena is the current leader, apparently, behind the pace car. Cars are catching up, I think. Okay, um, we're green. I don't know what's happening, but we're green. Oh, right here. Here we go. Yeah, I guess that's uh, something we're going to have to try to look at. <laughs> well, we got Lagor Green, less than 10 laps to go. I'm actually kind of tempted to throw another caution. Should we retry that? Yeah, let's give that another go. Yeah. Okay. We'll get retry. Them, get them back so it'll be a, it'll be a couple. Order. Yeah, it'll be a couple laps. It'll be less. We're less than ten, so we'll probably be. Uh, there is no race back. These cars are slowly slowing down, trying to get in their right spots here. So we're gonna throw another caution, attempt to get them to line back up, and then we'll have they'll have a couple laps to go. All right. Let's just kind of. I saw some smoke. I think we're gonna be okay though. Okay, we're all good. They're all yeah, they're all where they're supposed to be this now. This better. one this looks a lot better. I think what was going on, I think the big issue why it's we the lap had cars trying to go to the back, I think. Lap cars trying to go to the back and the timing of that yellow, I think we had like half the field that already crossed the star finish line to take the caution and the other half were trying to figure out where they were supposed to be. So you kinda intermingle all that with the lap cars trying to drop back. It was just a mess. Okay, so we should be going back with about four laps to go, I would believe. Yep, yep the lap cars are dropping back like they're supposed to. Okay. And these cars are not going to double up until turn three. Okay. Uh, I, just, I mean, in the meantime, let's talk about Henry Sanford, who was leading and then suddenly had a tire problem. And yeah, Dylan Pozzi, who unfortunately had a fuel issue, fuel pickup issue, I'm guessing. And Laura Chung out because of the accident. And, of course, the 41 never made it to the green flag. Uh, Dylan did not have a fuel pickup issue. He had no gas tank anymore because the uh, the 11 exploded it. That's true. So. All right. Well, anyways, quick top. Cycle, look what we got up here in the top 10 now. Quick top 10 rundown. Zach Rogers. Been a really good car so far, at least from the strategy wise. Madeline Crenshaw in second. Cody Lamas third. Ali Rain fourth. James Qualls in fifth. Carson Gum sixth. William Brock seventh. Cole Deaver eighth. Jessica Shelton, ninth, and Dylan Matthews rounds out the top ten as we are getting ready to go back green with four laps to go. Remember at the beginning of the Homestead race, both the front row cars, Qualls and Dylan Matthews, were very strong in the early short going. It's going to be a sprint here to the finish. Wonder if they've got a similar setup in both of those Fords. More importantly, let's talk about Matt, let's, the rebound for that seven car. Yeah. You know, she first two races, she finished outside the top 25, I believe. Not doing well in the points. Here she is sitting in second place. Prime spot on the outside, mind you, to take over the lead. And she got a good restart. I don't know what happened with Zach. I don't know if maybe he was sleeping a little bit. But uh, Green Flag came out. The seven card took over. And now we'll see with four laps to go who can hold on. Allie Rain up there in that four car as well. We know Haas Racing had a very strong machine with Zach Rogers. Now you've got double their chances of finding victory lane with the 14 up in the top five. 
and for Chevy too. The seven. Look at look at the side by side. We'll see. Does the te well does the outside lane prevail? Oh, Allie gonna go higher, but I think she lost a little bit of momentum there. And the seven gonna go up to block. That's coming in. I thought he was running rather low there through three and four. I didn't see the hand out the window, but I thought he might be coming to pit lane. Running low on fuel. I wonder what. The, so then I hope there's not a caution because if we get a green white checkered, because <laughs> yeah, I say because if we get a green white checkered, then I don't know if these cars are gonna be able to make it. Seth, we I seen during some test races if these cars don't pit and they go green, they can, they'll run themselves out of gas. Now you've got Chevrolet and a Ford nose to tail about a car length gap back to the Bass Pro Shops cars. One in. Oh, I think they're coming down pit road too. No, nope, I, well, I thought maybe they were. They looked a little low, Someone but... Back there. Someone's really low. I think they're coming in. Oh, no, that's Matthew Rodriguez. I thought he was running low enough that it looked like he was pitting, but... It's just Matthew really Rodriguez. It's just Matthew Rodriguez. It's just Matthew Rodriguez. Look at Carson Gum. Carson Gum, where did he come from? Four tires, maybe? Maybe? I don't know. He had to have had four tires or something. Carson Gum. <laughs> Blew the doors off Madeline Crenshaw. He really did. Might have had to run there off of turn four and carried that momentum down. Look at that. He bridge. Look at the lap time, though. He ran that. He ran his fastest lap, just fastest that lap. lap. Wow. Crenshaw trying to get to the inside there out of turn four. Carson Gum not going to allow it. I wonder if maybe the seven's on old tires, Rain's maybe? Second. Allie Rain's got a good run there on that top side up against the wall. She may be able to get second place here going into one and two. White flag, one lap to go. That's a battle for second place. No matter what, this is still gonna be a great finish for that seven car. Good for good for a momentum booster as well. But Carson Gum, our Daytona 500 winner, the last two seasons, the Daytona 500 winner has not had another win in the entire in the entire season, and that's about to change today. Carson yeah, Gum, <laughs> rookie Carson Gum, two wins on the season. He is going to win here at Auto Club, and I believe the seven just got second place. Oh look, and look who finished fourth. Whoa, Trent Dunham. Wow, he popped up there late. There really had to have been a. Uh, it looks like the 31 car came down pit road at some point too, but uh, wow, there had to have, that had to have been four tires. He had to have taken four tires on the on a pit stop. Well, to be honest, I'm not certain why anybody wouldn't have taken four tires on the last pit stop, but maybe he cooled his tires down more than anybody else here under pacing, so had more grip. I, don't I know. mean, he came out of nowhere. He did. He had a great run out of four, and he kept that momentum up all the way down the straight. Made one of the, the few passes on the inside line into turn one that we've seen all day. As the racing results have been saved here, Carson Gum, his second victory in the in season 14 all but luck car didn't find victory lane at all last season with colin cropley so uh man well i blame that on the driver <laughs> anyways so yeah carson gum wins madeline crenshaw second ali rain third that's two uh see yeah that's two women drivers and in, in the top five uh trent dunham fourth dylan matthews rebounds to fifth Charlie Buxton, a better finish this week than last week in sixth. Cole Deaver, Kyle Matthews, William Brock, and Cody Lamas round out the top ten. Look at the Hendrick cars finishing up in here. Yeah, I talked about the Chevys trying to break into victory lane. They didn't do it today, but you had, I think it was five of them here. No, sorry, six of them inside of the top ten. Now we got James Qualls finishing 11th. Nathan Orman, Jessica Shelton, Matthew Rodriguez, Benjamin Miles, Anthony McCurry, Seth Cole. Daniel Voyles, Cole Baker, Nick Gunther round out your top 20. Matt McIntyre, kind of, I guess you could kind of say rebound a little bit yeah, fr from his spin. Could. Definitely, that caution saved him. He stayed on the lead lap. I mean, I think he was going to be in line to finish somewhere around 33rd, 34th if the caution hadn't flown. So that's a net gain of about 10 spots right there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sam, uh, Samet Ozcan. Reggie Fogelman and Roberto Crown Jr. round out the cars that finished on the lead lap. And then the cars that finished laps down include Christina Bell, Charles Sanfer, R.J. Bishop, Levi McIntyre, Charles Belding, Dylan Young, Marcus Schuenberg, Zachary Fitzwater, uh, Bernard Oliveira, and Zach Rogers two laps down. So something had to have happened to Zach. 
Yeah, he had a much longer pit stop than just taking on fuel. I don't know exactly what it was. Uh, he didn't come out of pit road until a lap later than he really should have. That's a tough break there. Picked up a stage uh, victory, so he has a playoff point if he makes it into the playoffs. But uh, but that is not in any way uh, replicating what how strong of a car he had. And tough break for the hometown guy, Charles Sanford, right out of the gate. Some type of problem came had to come to pit road in that first lap and never got back on the lead lap after that. Yeah, absolutely. Henry Sanford with the tire issue, Dylan Poti. Man, the one time he's not here commentating with us. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Chung, unfortunate time for her. She was on such a good run, too. Qualified on the pole, finishes 37th. And Jonathan Zorline, who never even saw the green flag. Nope, didn't. Yeah, very, very tough break for them. Here's the good news. Season's still early. That's true. Season's still early. I'm going to pull up my, uh, my schedule here to write down the winner, which is Carson Gum. Carson Gum, parentheses, X2. And next week, we're, we're packing up, going over to Las Vegas next week. So that ought to be a very fun race, too. <laughs> High speeds, but a smaller track. So we're, we're getting we're getting progressively smaller in uh, track size, but not in terms of uh, car speed. Yeah, for real. Rest in peace, Dan Weldon. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me up here in the boot set. Always fun to have somebody to talk to instead of just myself. Yeah, absolutely. It's fun to be able to talk to somebody besides yourself, too. <laughs> Hate you. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's going to be it here for us today, the Budweiser All-Pro Series. I am Michael Norman, the official voice of the Budweiser All-Pro Series, saying, until we meet again.